subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon for the latest film interviews, features and recommendations on the movies that matter. Vidya, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the uh, Indian Film Festival of Melbourne Film Club. Um, you know, this is the 11th year of the festival and this year in the lead up to the festival, um, we're doing things a little bit differently because of course everything's changed. The world has changed. So in the lead up, we're doing the film club and uh, we're chatting with our favorite filmmakers and our favorite actors. And you are no stranger to the festival. Uh, you are, of course, you, you, you were, of course, the first ambassador to the festival. The, the IFIM family loves you. You've been this incredible pillar. But most of all, you've been this incredible actor. You are this absolutely wonderful actor, unquestionably one of India's finest. And we're so happy that the cinephiles, the fans, uh, you know, have this opportunity to chat with you. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, no, my got... pleasure entirely. Thank you. We've got fans. We've got your fans from Australia, of course, from New Zealand, from Malaysia, Indonesia, um, and of course, from India. So there's going to be lots of questions. I've been told not to hog the conversation and leave enough time for the fans to ask questions. So I'm going to jump straight in. Vidya, of course, um, you know, you've got, you've got your new movie coming out. You've got Shakuntala Devi coming out in two days. I want to ask you if it feels a little bit different this time around. You know, what, what do you usually like a few days before a film release? And does this time feel a little bit different because it's uh, it's going to streaming and not in cinemas? If it takes the pressure of box office off, but it also gives you two hundred countries or so that you're going to. Yeah, you know. So I think um, by this time I'm always exhausted <laughs> because you know I've been promoting the film heavily. Um, so this time it's no different. But I think it's the adrenaline rush that keeps me going. And I feel that, you know, doesn't change whether it's on, um, you know, an OTT platform or it's a theatrical release. I'm happy, like you said, that our film is going to be, um, you know, premiering uh, in 200 countries on the same day, on the 31st of July. I think that's fabulous. Yes, it takes the pressure off the weekend box office numbers. But you know, what does that really mean? It means so many people went and watched your film, so many people hopefully liked it and all that. So that I still want to know. Right. <laughs> that's still, that's why we work, you know. Right. That's why we make movies and that, uh, I, mean, I think on, on the weekend, I still feel like, you know, who's seen it? All the more here, because you don't know. <laughs> right. There's no tabulation, so to speak, to really, um, to quantify the number of people who've seen it. I, I do think they have some method um, right. and I hope they share it with us. But I, I'll be very keen to know that anyway. So there is the nervousness, mm. but with probably a little less pressure. Okay, okay. Maybe, you know, um, for, those, for those that may not know, a very quick, um, Shakuntala Devi, of course, was the late great mathematician. And, you know, for anyone that doesn't know who she was, please uh, go to YouTube and look at her videos. She was incredible. I want to ask you, Vidya, how much did you know and about her? And, and do you remember being pitched this idea? Do you remember what your, your first reactions were? So, you know, when Anu Menon, the writer-director, came to me, she said, I want to make a biopic on... Um, you know, Shakuntala Devi, the mathematical genius, the wizard, um, you know, and she, obviously what I knew was that the world over, she was known as a human computer, that her name is in the Guinness Book of World Records. That was the extent of my knowledge on her. But when she started sharing, um, you know, Shakuntala Devi's life story with me, uh, I was fascinated. I was like, how is it that you know, we don't celebrate this woman. Why is she not being taught in lessons in school? At least in, I wasn't taught about Shakuntala Devi in school. And I think not just for her mathematical genius, but the fact that she was, she didn't have any formal education, but she went on to earn the title of a human computer. She went on to write books on a variety of subjects. The first book on homosexuality in India, The World of Homosexuals. A cookery book for men, if you please. <laughs> uh, you know, a, a crime thriller and of course puzzle books, books on astrology. So I was like, my God. And then of course I started researching. Um, so I gave Anu the go ahead to write the script. And I was, you know, Anu would write and, you know, share drafts with me. And every draft, was um, I think 
with every draft, I realized that it was getting better and better. You know, it was a bit tough because I honestly feel that two hours is not enough to tell her life story. So it was so difficult to choose what to keep and what not to keep. So we went through various drafts, but I think Anu, uh, Naimika, her co-writer, and Ishita Moitra, hats off to them. You know, they gave it a lot of time and patiently, um, you know, went through various drafts until we were all, we all felt wedded to what was on paper. Right. And uh, th that's how it all started. You know, it took a while. I think one and a half years since I first heard she wanted to make the film. But um, I just felt like she, she was way ahead of her time. We talk about feminism today. I don't even know if she ascribed to that uh, right. actively. But, you know, she lived it. Right. She believed that she had every right to be equal um, to every man. Right. Um, and that her gender should not define or limit her in any way. She was unapologetic about the choices she made. So I think she owned her life, she owned her choices. And again, coming from where she did, I thought it was unbelievable. She came right. from a small town in Karnataka, you know, Mysore, and then she spent some time, uh, a large part of her life in Bangalore. And, you know, for someone who was not even exposed to a formal school system or didn't go to college to have, she, by the end of it, not by the end of it, she picked up Spanish. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, she was, there was nothing she couldn't do, literally. She cooked, apparently she was a very good cook and uh, very sweet detail, but she cooked non-veg for her husband while she was vegetarian. Uh, she loved tap dancing. She would actually tap out the rhythm because, again, rhythm is maths. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, all these details uh, are, you know, we really packed in as much as we could. But I think these embellishments give you a sense of the wholesome life she led. And as a right. woman, that's very inspiring. How long does it typically take you to get a grip of the character? I mean, of course, you had the research and of course, you've done the homework. And, and does the physical, um, you know, getting into, into costume and, and makeup and hair, does that, is that also a good entry point? How long does it typically take to, to sort of feel like, okay, I've got this character. I'm, I'm now in. You, you know, I, I don't know. It really varies. And until I reach set, I, I don't know if I've got a hang of the character of the person okay. I'm going to be playing. It takes a couple of days. I remember I was very concerned about Matt shows because if you see her videos, you'll see that they were not like dull, boring Matt Correct. shows, you know. She made them fun. She infused them with humor. She, she was anyway so quick with numbers. But there was a, uh, you know, she enjoyed the numbers. So I had to capture that. I had to, I didn't want to imitate her. But I had to capture the spirit, the essence, the wicked sense of humor uh, of Shakuntala Devi. So I was concerned about that. Anu and I spoke a lot about it. And on the first day, you know, I was, of course, finding my feet. Um, but we did, we did a match show scene at the end of the day. And I was actually like, oh my God, you know, why did they have to have it on the very first day? But once I did it, I was like, oh my God, you know, now I feel like I know, I know who she is. Yeah. You know, I think I've got, um, I've, I've been able to, I don't know, just get a grip on her. That happened. So I think it, I don't know how long it takes. It right. does take a lot of time, especially in this case where, you know, it was almost like, Peeling an onion. Every right. layer you peel revealed something else. So mm. it was very exciting, but it was also daunting. It was a bit intimidating, I have to admit. But once it started, I began to enjoy it. There was a certain flourish she had, you know, she was right. she would tease her audiences, but all that interaction, Raji, uh, made people actually enjoy Max. There are people who told me that, you know. Uh, I suddenly felt that, oh, Max can be fun after watching Shakuntala Devi. And not just few people, because once the film was announced, 
I right. felt like the entire world had met Shakuntala Devi except me. Her human has a Shakuntala Devi story, you know, story. about yeah. how she had gone to their school or they had watched her at Shalmukhanan. As a matter of fact, Akshay Kumar told me he watched her at Shalmukhanan. Um, there were lots of people who also said that they've gone to her for astrological consultation, especially from our business. <laughs> <Correct>. <laughs> so, you know, it's quite. Um, I still don't know. I, I don't know if I've answered your question because I don't know the answer to that no, question. No, I hear you. I, I hear you. I, I want to ask you, how heavily do you let it weigh on you um, that you're playing someone who is a real figure? And can that, and, and allowing that to constantly be at the back of your head, can that be a deterrent? I mean, do you kind of put that aside and just play what's on paper? Or, or is it always weighing on you that... I have to live up to the memory of this woman. I have to live up to the legacy of this woman. I have to, I owe responsibility to the fans of this person. I mean, what is that process like? No, here? you know, I, I think which is why I figured that, um, you know, while you have tools like makeup and costumes and you just mentioned it, uh, that, you know, all of that helps you get a grip on the person or get a sense of who she was because physicality is a large part of uh, a person's of a personality uh, of an in, of the personality of an individual so i feel like there has to be a likeness and i'm trying to capture the essence or the spirit like i said but i don't at any point want it to become a caricature so i don't mm -hmm. mimic or imitate the person finally it is an actor it's vidya playing shakuntala baby it right. will never be shakuntala baby so i i think that I learned early on, you know, that uh, that would be an impossibility to strive towards. So it's, if I can give you a whiff of her mannerisms, for example, which Correct. also, I, you know, it has to be in the script, for example. Mm. Like here, there are, like, you know, do you want uh, the answer left for right, right. Left, or left, right? Those That's are things super. that you use, you know, so that gives me... Um, you know that that's also a mannerism, and at the same time, um, she used those. Uh, what, what is it? There was a certain style. There was a certain elan with which she did these things. So it captures that, yeah. and it's real. And at the same time, um, it doesn't look like I'm um, making a caricature of the person. If you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, but it has to also be there in the script. Mm, I hear you. Yeah, you because know, if it's not there in the script yeah. and if I try to bring it in, I think that's when, you know, it, it ends up being a bit of a, um, it looks efforted. Right. You know, is it a coincidence, Vidya, that most of the, certainly in the biopics that you've done, you know, or, or the stories which are based on real people, um, they've, been, they've been women who've been, sort of in control of their narrative, you know, strong women, um, you know, whether it's, uh, whether it's Mission Mangal, which was based on a, on a real person, whether it was the dirty picture and now, uh, and now Shakuntala Devi, um, you know, I remember asking, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, dropping names here. I remember asking this question to Angelina Jolie. I remember saying that, you know, are you interested in, um, in, in playing weak, a weak character as well? And, and that can be a fascinating story as well. It may not be an inspiring story. And, and maybe it can be. You know, I remember you doing Hamari Adhuri Kahani. And I remember people not going for that. Because I feel like there is a, there, you know, when, when it's Vidya, you want to see Vidya as this hugely inspiring figure. Because that is, that is how people see you. I mean, is that, do you have thoughts about this? I mean, do you, do you feel it might be fascinating to play someone who's not in control of their narrative? No, absolutely. I think there were other problems with Hamari Adhuri Kahani which is why it didn't work. So yeah. I, I don't think that, you know, people would have minded seeing me being weak or vulnerable if the film overall had worked. For some reason, right. it didn't. So I do think that I'm very fascinated by not just people like Shakuntala Devi and Tara Shinde um, in Mission Mangal, but also yeah. someone who's weak at the start, but hopefully goes through this, um, you know, life-changing moment or this journey and right. lands up crosses over to the other side. Right. You know, uh, I, I'm also very fascinated by those stories. It does not have to be big. It does not have to be flashy. It Correct. can be because all these, you know, I'm inspired by any woman who's trying to live her life on her own terms or who's at least negotiating her space. In right. a village, that negotiation would be very different 
from the way it is for a girl who's probably educated, who goes to work, you know. So all these, I think, are finally different expressions, but at different stages right. of us trying to, um, you know, like I said, negotiate our space in the world. Right. You know, since you mentioned that, I want to very quickly just say this, and this is for everybody who's who's on this chat. I happen to see a short film that Vidya has produced and made called Nutcut, which is a beautiful film, and I hope that Neetu will will source it for the festival. Uh, you know, wh Thank whenever you. It, whenever it becomes available, it's it's also again the story of a mother and a, a young boy, and and how she sort of changes his, you know, how she sort of gives him a you know, a real look at life and perspective and, and changes his mind. I mean, it's about, it's about patriarchy. I don't want to give away too much. It's too early, I know. But it's a beautiful film. Um, do you find that you're naturally drawn to, uh, you know, to stories which, which in a way will, will help, you know, either empower or make you feel, you know, make the other person feel good or just improve the world in a way? You know, I think it's not so much about the world, but um, I, I almost feel like people often feel, uh, think of me as a, um, what is that poster child for women's empowerment but the right, only right. person I'm really always trying to empower is me okay. so I think every story that I tell probably um, helps me you know sets me free in some way right. you know some part of me that's that's still struggling, that probably has certain questions, whether it's Tumhari Sulu or it's Mission Mangal or Shakuntala Devi, I think they're all responses, these choices are responses to my current state of mind. It may even be how I'm feeling about the world around us. You right. know, or, so it, yeah, it's, I, I think it's, it's really that. Okay. okay. So it's not a larger cause. Cause. Sure. But it's wonderful that, you know, in, in just being able to empower yourself, you're able to sort of inspire so many others. I mean, that's a great gift, you know, to be someone who can be an agent of change, even, even, uh, you know, unconsciously, just because of, just because of the integrity with which you approach it. So, so more power. Thank you. I, I, I feel very fortunate, you know, to have a voice and I never forget that it is my work that gives me that voice. Um, if anyone, this, you know, pays heed to what I have to say, at least listens to what I have to say. Uh, it's only because this work has given me that platform. Right. I have to ask you, and I, I know the answer, but I want everyone else to hear this. We have to talk about the about your love for numbers. I mean, this also became a, a sort of natural. I mean, you you kind of you 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 saw merit in it, and you could get into it because you love numbers, and you you were quite the maths nut. This is shaming everyone, the rest of us who were terrible at maths, but uh, but you were <laughs> apparently very good at it. <laughs> no, but I think. I have to say that, you know, at least I, I think, I, I believe things are changing in our education system. But I think the way we've been taught maths Correct. Uh, Correct. made us feel like, you know, maths was an abstraction, like it was an otherworldly thing, you know, right. it, it, almost like it had no relation to our lives. But with doing this film, I realized that no, you know, maths is all around us. If only we were taught maths like that, if only we were taught to see how maths is in cooking, it's in, um, you know, nature, it's in music, it's Correct. in everything, you know, even writing, there is a measure of maths, the, the way you use your words, there is That's a certain true. maths to it. There's so meter to your sentences and yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Poetry, it's also maths. So yeah. I wish we were taught maths like that, then we wouldn't be scared of maths. Luckily for me, I think, Maybe it's my, I don't know, maybe it's my South Indian genes or the fact that my parents uh, were yeah. fairly good in maths. So it was a, I enjoyed maths. I did fairly well, except for some ridiculous mistakes sometimes, but I love numbers. I have a thing for numbers, you know. So I've, uh, uh, I used to remember strange, like if I still, I met an actor, I think 20 years ago, uh -huh. and I haven't met her since but she told me her birthday is on the 15th of December. And every year on the 15th of December, I remember her. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I have a very crazy connection with numbers. After this, I, I'm telling you mine. Huh? I'm going to test you next year. <laughs> <laughs> done. Done. Absolutely. But you have to realize that I've also grown older by 20 years <laughs> since. No, but you I think what? that helped me in good stead on this film, you know, because I had to learn up long numbers 
and apparently they were thinking that they would probably need to use um you know a cue cards and things like that but right. i i managed without any such uh, external help how oh, lovely but yeah, what's this la you know the last few months i mean it's 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 changed everything's changed i know that you were shooting a film weren't you you were you were in the forest shooting a film when when lockdown happened i mean um yeah. can you tell us what that was like in mp madhya pradesh you know um i was shooting for shermi which is being directed by amit masurkar and produced by uh, vikram malhotra who is also right. the producer of shakuntala devi and then suddenly oh, we were actually quite disconnected from what was happening here you know i would hear i was i don't follow the news and whatever i get to know is largely through siddharth but um he would tell me and i'd be like you know you guys are over reacting nothing like that is happening in this part of the world and then suddenly one day we heard that we are going to have to wrap up shoot because of the pandemic because you know a pause button is being <laughs> pressed and and i was actually quite disoriented we came back and i remember on that flight there were very few people in the airport there were 56 people in toto and that's when it hit me and then of course i came to bombay and i saw the streets empty it was the lockdown hadn't been imposed yet but it was already there was a sense of some change underway you know so i think it did come as a bit of a shock but then of course i think all of us have adapted to this the yeah. this change in our lives and uh, god what all it's brought up <laughs> is there a part of you that's itching to go back to work have you are you is has this also been the longest um period that you've been away from the sets in a sense no <laughs> you've taken the long breaks now <laughs> i take you on breaks in between i think that's what keeps you sane and that's what that's what inspires the right choices <laughs> thank you uh, but so this isn't the longest break but this is the longest i've stayed at home so one day my sister called me and said you know how come you're not edgy because i thought you wouldn't be able to stay at home but mm. i stayed at home very comfortably i'm actually a home body this time i also had siddharth for company at home so it was fine uh but i find that these i go into lockdown very often <laughs> while the rest of the world is you know you've seen those short so shots and films where yeah everything, there's a freeze frame the world around you is uh moving and you're static i feel right. like that often so <laughs> but what do you think this is going to do um with your for i mean for the film business i'm sorry i i, I but you know today you're also a producer you're also uh, you know your your husband the producer so i'm i'm kind of extending that um how do you think this is going to fundamentally change the way that we make films or this business continues i mean have you had some thoughts um you know there's a lot of conversation about that and a lot of people are pronouncing um you know the the end of um yeah. the theatrical experience in some way but i don't believe that at all mm. i think this is obviously at this time we're all we're all confused there's a lot of uncertainty and obviously people are not able to book the theaters but that does not mean all doom and gloom you know i yeah. believe that once things go back to normal people love that experience the collective experience of you know feeling something of sharing sharing that experience yeah so i definitely think that theaters are here to stay but we have the option today in the interim to watch content on ott platforms but i do believe that both are going to thrive survive and thrive right have you been reading scripts is there a post lockdown kind of lineup i know you will complete share me but uh, but yeah. is there uh, you know has this period also been that i mean to know what the next steps will be what the next choices will be no actually i chose not to read anything i read some synopsis but i feel like you know firstly my my first priority would be to complete share me but we don't even know when we're going to be able to resume that yeah. because everyone's saying post the rains because we won't be able to shoot in the rains of this year but um, i i don't want to plan for next year because in 6 yeah. months a lot can change if i commit myself to something now i may not feel the same way especially on the other side of covid or at least once things start going back to normal maybe we'll be looking at the world differently so i okay. want to read scripts only when you know there is some sort of clarity 
has this been a period of 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 watching a lot as well um you know a lot of yes. actors a lot of filmmakers yeah what what are you recommending what are you strongly recommending <laughs> you know um i've watched a lot actually so uh i've watched a lot of cookery shows to be very honest which i've never done in my life before there's this family cooking show down um uh, you know there's another nadia's <laughs> uh time to eat uh, um there's um oh god there's zambo as a matter of fact australia's um zambo uh can someone help me with that um there's this this shweta sorry if you can unmute yourself this is very famous show which i enjoyed which i watched obsessively but also in terms of also cooking fun. also with related to cooking Yeah, yeah, all of it. Okay. But then <laughs> you know, the next question is going to be: Have you? I mean, did you try any of? Did Did you experiment with any of those things in the kitchen? Ah, uh, no, I did try my hand at cooking for the first time in my life, but I didn't experiment with any of those. I think okay. I was also I didn't have most of the ingredients, <laughs> you know. And then um, they were a little complicated. It was just fun to see people like whipping up these treats in no time, and you know, under pressure. and just I, i don't think i've had that uh, i've always been intimidated by cooking so actually what prompted the viewing is the fact that i started cooking a bit to give the girl at home some respite right. because she was cooking every single day but also i watched shows like um you know a lot of the ryan murphy stuff um right. I, i absolutely love him i watched pose um i watched uh, politician uh, right. transparent um of course patal lok which we spoke about the last yeah. time and yeah. um, lots of other shows yeah um the assassination of gianni versace um yeah. uh, oj simpson so largely ryan murphy yeah. then of course unorthodox and uh, i love dick there's a show called i love dick on <laughs> amazon prime it's just it's I, i love how uh the content is so varied on ott platforms i mean i haven't been watching too many films so i have to admit uh-huh. but, but yes watch? i watched yeah. uh, sorry richard jewel all oh, right clint uh, eastwood's film yeah oof i loved it right. loved it it was almost transformative for me <laughs> with do you think because because storytelling has improved so much and and because we you know even the indian programming is just so good today on ott you know shows like patal lok and and so many others i mean there've been there've been some great shows this year um do you think that's going to have an impact on the kind of films that will be made i mean because the options now to stay home and 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 be entertained in a very qualitative way are so are so great do you think that it's going to have a direct impact on the on on cinema for sure you know i think it's definitely going to up our game there is now there's no choice honestly because even uh, your lay audience you know it's not no longer an evolved audiences choice to watch content on the ott platforms it's Correct. your lay audiences are watching right uh, are consuming content on various ott platforms so i definitely think that we are going to have to it's going to change something i don't know how but it has to uh, it is going to affect a change in the way we tell our stories and the kind of stories we tell also i think in in a post covid world you know it is like probably um what happened uh, post the world war you right. know there was so you could see the impact of that in the stories that were being churned out i definitely think that this is one of those definitive times that is going to find reflection in the kind of stories we tell right you know i'm going to open it out to audiences in exactly a few minutes but i want to ask you before that i'm going to ask you two questions and then we'll we'll open it out for questions i want to ask you yeah. you know every time i talk to actors and actresses um you know i ask i tend to ask them what's the one film that you wish you had done that you watched and you wish you had done and 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 believe me when i say that so many of them will end up picking a vidya balan film because you've had this beautiful resume of you know every, i mean everybody wishes they a parinita uh, uh, came along uh, you know or a kahani came along um, or, or or a pa came along um i want to ask you that question what was the last film that you saw that you went i would have liked to be in this 
and not to take away from the other person, of course. No, no, because of course. I, I, but, but, but something that, you know, I feel like the best stuff comes to you. Um, but is there something that even Vidya Balan wishes that she'd have been, a, uh, that, that could have come her way? I have to say that, you know, when I see a good performance, Raji, I never feel like I wish I right. had gotten a go at it. Because I, I think a good performance is one that doesn't leave you, leave, you know, uh, leave for you to uh, imagine uh, yourself yeah. in that role. So invariably, when I like something, I feel like, great. When I don't like something, <laughs> is when I feel like, you know, I wish I had done this. Maybe I would have done this differently. Uh, so no, I've not, not felt like that about anything I've watched, honestly. How wonderful. How incredible. Um, Vidya, do you have an idea? And, and again, um, you know, I know that this is a profession that is so uncertain, right? I mean, who would have thought six months ago that this is where we, we would be today? Um, and therefore, I know that when you ask questions, when, when one asks questions about plans, it, it seems almost, you know, they say you make plans and, and none of them uh, fructify. And, and yet I feel like actors must have some, an idea of what direction they'd like to go in. Um, do you have a sense of what you, you know, what five years later, what you'd like to be doing in terms of, I mean, uh, do, uh, did, did, you know, your experience producing that short film make you feel like I'd like to, I'd like to empower more, you know, I'd like to, uh, you know, be able to tell more stories that I think would not perhaps get told. I mean, do you have an idea? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I never have. Um, you know, I just hope that the best content comes to me <laughs> because I know we have great writers and directors and producers. I selfishly want all of that for myself, but I've right. never had an idea about, you know, what kind of work, like it's always like, you know, I keep telling my mother, um, there are times when I tell my mother, actually, that I'm, I'm hungry and she says, what do you want to eat? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's exactly that. I don't know. But if you present something great to me, I'll just grab it. <laughs> right. That is a great attitude, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Okay. We're going to take some questions, Vidya. Uh, we've got a whole bunch. We'll try, to, we'll try to accommodate as many as we can. So if everyone keeps their questions short, guys, everyone will get a chance. Juhi Gurpade, if we can unmute Juhi. Juhi, you can ask your question now. Hi, Vidya. I'm so Hi. excited because I'm a huge fan of yours and uh, you. I was watching uh, Parinita for the I don't know how many times on Netflix two weeks back and you know I was uh, curious to know obviously you were brilliant in that movie that was your first movie I was curious to know that you've really grown as an actress so you know is it a deliberate process do you really uh, go back maybe to your films and deliberate how you could have done things better or have you honed your skills uh, being inspired by scripts or directors that you've worked with? You know, um, I have to say that um, very early in my career when I, I was doing ad films, I did an ad film that changed my life. Uh, it was for a bike. It was with these wonderful directors, Namrata and Shubir. Um, we were shooting in Rajasthan. And I, had, I was at 19, they expected me to play mother to an eight year old and the story of the ad went like this, that basically we are, you know, my husband's expected back uh, on, holiday, on holidays from the army and we're, we're very excited. We are, you know, there's anticipation in the air and he comes back and we're so happy. And just when we're spending time together, um, you know, they call back to the front. And I just couldn't, you know, just we're, um, we're trying to tune the radio to listen to some music. And that's when we hear this message uh, for all army personnel who are being called back. And there was that moment I just couldn't get because obviously I didn't have the experience in life of what that meant. You know, and I remember those directors telling me and even the man who was playing my husband was struggling. We were struggling together. So I remember these directors telling me that an actor is so much more than expressions. You have to feel, you know, what that character is experiencing. And for that, you may not be able to uh, draw, you know, uh, draw, um, uh, like derive that from your own life experiences, but you have to keep, keep yourself open to life so 
whatever you can, listen to all kinds of music, watch, you know, plays, watch dance performances, just interact with people, keep, be like a sponge and soak it all in. Because tomorrow if I have to play, I don't know, uh, a pilot, I'm obviously not a pilot and I'm, I, I don't know how to do it. So if I've, if I've read something or I can draw from those, those borrowed experiences of people, you know, that changed my attitude towards acting. I used to think it was a pretty face and expressions and that's it. But I think my biggest learning has been life itself. So I think if I'm growing as a person, I will grow as an actor. But if I'm not, then... So I don't think it's a conscious attempt at anything. It's, it's just about living life and hoping that <laughs> I'm getting better. Thank you, thank you. That's actually great advice. That's great advice for anyone that's, that wants to be an actor. Um, right. Ranjan Ghosh, if we could bring in Ranjan Ghosh. Hi, Vidya. My question for you is, uh, since you are doing biopics, uh, Mission Mangal, uh, The Dirty Picture, and now Shakuntala Devi, do we see you doing something on Sri Devi someday? Because I'm a biggest fan of hers and I know you are one too. So do we see you doing that any day, any time in the future? I'm a crazy fan of Sri Devi and uh, if I got the opportunity to tell her story, I'd love to. But as of now, honestly, no one's approached me with it. But I'd love to. You did do a song though. You did, you did yeah. How I Very Beautifully actually. <laughs> Thank you. You know, uh, and she saw it. I'm so happy she did. I'm so happy I could pay that tribute when she was still with us. Yeah. Yeah, because at that time we had no inkling that it would be so soon, but... Thank you. Prith D, we have a question from Prith D. If we can... Hi, good evening, ma'am. Hi. It's a big hello from me and my husband. And you are Hi. looking lovely in your sari, ma'am. Oh, thank you. My question to you, ma'am, is that you started your career with Hampach, which was a television series. And after a decade coming back on OTT platform, which is Shakuntala Devi, how would you define your uh, circular journey? I'm really excited to know that. It's been challenging. It's been tough. But it's been exciting and fulfilling. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. And um, I just want to say that, you know, this is actually the film industry is a beautiful place um, where meritocracy reigns supreme. And... Um, there are ups and downs in life that we all have to deal with. Uh, but it's, if you're true to yourself, really the sky's the limit, maybe even beyond. Okay. So I feel very grateful for these um, years, for the journey, for my journey so far, for all the experiences. If I had to relive these years, I would relive it in exactly the same way. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Vidya. Thank you. Srika Ramani. Srika Ramani. Hi. Hi, ma'am. Hi. Hi. Srika Ramani. I'm a student Hi. at the University of Southern California, a business of cinematic arts student. Uh, I must say this is very full circle because when I was like eight years old, I remember I wanted to meet you and then your producers were pushing you aside because you had to go for a shooting and then you took the time to turn and say hi to me. So now getting the chance to actually talk to you is like full circle. Oh my um, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting. And it was in Bangalore in Sheraton actually. Yeah. Oh really? Um, I just wanted to say that in a very cutthroat industry, you know, especially today when there's so much conversation about it, one that especially scrutinizes women in terms of their image and their film choices, what would you say was that one incident or that one moment that shaped you into this bold and independent artist? We've seen you give answers back to like the media about your choices and it's like my best compilation on YouTube. When did you become like that secure person, both as a woman and as an artist in the public life? I don't think it was just one moment. Um, you know, it, it was years of introspection of having conversations with my closest people of just of working with a healer uh, I've been doing that for a while because I think, you know, life today, um, it, not just as a public figure, but for all of us, you know, there are too many pressures. And um, 
I feel it really helps to sometimes talk to someone who's not emotionally invested in you and uh, who gives you some tools to just protect yourself, to retain your sanity. Um, so I don't think it's one moment. It's actually, it's, and it's work in progress. Um, you know, I, I still sometimes, I think it's normal to feel low. Uh, there are times when I feel angry. There are times when I feel resentful. There are times when I want to lash back. And, um, but with time, with maturity, with experience, I have realized that, you know, uh, you know, there's no, there's no point getting upset um, or destroying your peace of mind over what uh, someone else says about you. Uh, as long as you know who you are, that's all that should matter. And which is why I don't read anything about myself um, in the news or on social media. I don't even read comments. And uh, while some people say that's very unfair to the people who like your uh, posts or who are commenting, taking, making the effort uh, to comment, I just feel that, you know, I'd say a thank you in my heart, but I don't want to read what's said about me. I know who I am and that's all that matters to me. How lovely. Thank you. Thank you for that lovely question. And Vidya, thank you for really opening your heart. That's, that's very generous. Thank you. We can go to Lydia Ostapi, please. Um, my question is, while in role, um, have you ever surprised yourself? Yes, Lydia, as a matter of fact, you know, uh, when I'm imagining how I play out a scene, um, I think invariably when I see the outer expression of it after I've performed it, I was like, yeah, I saw it, saw it like this in my mind's eye, um, um, through my mind's eye. But, um, you know, there are times when there's, there's a flicker of something that, that I, like, I didn't know I'd express myself like that in a scene. Like I remember there's a film, uh, you, I, we've spoken so much about Kahani, so I must speak about Kahani. Uh, there's a scene where, I, I don't know if you watch Kahani, Lydia, but there's a scene when I visit the mob to check out uh, a body. They think that it might be my husband's body and I go see the body and I come out crying and I, I gag because you know, it's, it's very tough to be in, the, in that mob. And then I'm crying in this, officer with me says, you know, do you, do you know of any of uh, your husband's relatives? Um, maybe we could, you know, just uh, check if they know anything about him, if, they, if he visited them at some point. And um, when I saw the scene, I saw that um, I had done it in a way that was very different from the way I had seen it here. So that was a surprise for me because when you re-watch that scene, you know, you realize that she made up a story in response to his question. I didn't know I had done that when I was performing the scene. So when I saw the scene, uh, I was like, wow, I actually did that? So it's always fascinating when you surprise yourself. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Vidya. This was incredible, mm -hmm. Vidya. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I think you. that I, I think that just just understanding the process and and sort of you know um, all the valuable advice actually you know uh, talking about how being a better person and 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 growing as a person helps you grow as uh, as an actor. I think that, that that's something actually we can apply to you know even for the for those of us that are not actors but are professionals in other uh, other spheres of life. So thank you so much, Vidya. Thank you for uh, for being absolutely incredible. Um, more power. Can't wait to watch Shakuntala Devi. And of course, it drops an Amazon Prime video on Friday the thirty first. Um, I feel like I feel like a lot of us are really going to be looking forward to watching the film to see you raise the bar once again. So more power, and hopefully. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll see you at the festival in, in, in the coming years. You know, you've been away for yes. a while. Hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll see you soon. I'm going to I talk so, back to yeah. yeah, I really hope I'm able to uh, come back to Melbourne for IFFM and just, you know, just yeah. that vibe and Me Too and mind-blowing films. I miss, I miss all of you and Raji, thank you. It's always so easy to talk to you. Thank you, Vidya. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Me Too Bhamik Longye, who's the festival director, of course, uh, you, know, say, you know, say thank you and, and wrap things up. Thank you. And thank you all. Vidya, thank you so much. I mean, you're, like I said, you're a part of the Ifam family. I feel you have more ownership 
through FM than any one of us. So um, thank you. It was so special to have you with us. I was so hoping that uh, you would even discuss when we met that um, you you would be here and uh, we would have celebrated your wonderful film. And uh, but um, like they say, man proposes, God disposes. So, but hopefully next year and the year after and the year after. And uh, lots of love to you for being so generous with you. your time. Not only today, but always. I, I can never thank you enough. And uh, thank you to everyone who joined us for the film club chat today. Um, you can watch the recorded version both on Rajiv Masan's uh, YouTube channel and also on our IFM YouTube channel. And and uh, please do spread the word and we'll see you all soon with you all the very very best thank you me too lots of love big virtual hug <laughs> bye